Father, I thank you for this moment. We can never get this moment back. It will be written in the history books, Father God. April 24th, 2022. At this hour, this time, you've called us to be in this house to preach this word and to hear this word. And I'm asking you, sweet Jesus, to help me. I need you. Open the ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying for those in this house, for those that are watching online now, and those that will watch this video days and weeks and years to come. I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 So, I'm not sure if you've ever been to a gender reveal party. No pun intended. Amen. I don't know if you've ever been to a gender reveal party, but this is the definition of it. I looked it up. <clears throat> don't know what it was. A gender reveal party is a party held during pregnancy. <coughs> Excuse me. To reveal the baby's sex to the of the gender sex to the expected parents, family, and friends. Now, sometimes the parents already know the gender, and they're just kind of revealing it to the family and the friends, right? Sometimes the parents already know. The gender reveal party is very exciting. Amen. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. It's very exciting. People are coming like, what is the baby sex? Oh my God, what is the gender? Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Some people even show up with pink to represent. Hello, somebody. Some people show up with blue to represent. Like, we don't know. Like, the people are just so excited about this moment. You know, so they come with great expectation, waiting, anticipating. What's the gender of this child? Amen. Once the baby gender is revealed, though, everything changes at that point. Hear what I'm saying. Once the gender of the baby is revealed, whether you know it's a boy or a girl. Some of you guys may know when you walked in, there was a, is it a boy or a girl? I know we have our associate pastor in the house. She just went upstairs. Pastor Shannon Robinson. It may be a boy, maybe a girl. Some of you may know already, but you know, for those who don't know, you're going to find out today. We don't know. We even asked you to put a little name if you want. I put, yeah, put a little name. I know what name I put. <laughs> so everything changes when the gender of the baby is revealed. The baby no longer is referenced to he or she. The baby now is addressed as he or she. Right. Not as, uh, what is it? What is it going to be? Now it's as, as, oh, she, the baby yeah. girl. Or he, da, da, da. Now you can identify, right? Even at that time, the parents start choosing. Like they X out all the... You know, other gender that is not. Whether it was a girl, so we're asking out all the boys. Or if it's a, you know, if it's a girl, we're asking out the boys. Now they're narrowing down the name. It's getting close. We gotta pick it. It's, we gotta be very specific. And guess what, guys? We even start to buy outfits. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I already began. Hallelujah! <laughs> I began a long time ago. The parents begin to focus on the baby's gender, name, all these things. It's so exciting. Something else changes come on when the when the resurrection is revealed when the resurrection is revealed something else changes the title of this sermon is the resurrection reveals dot 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 there's many things that the resurrection reveals and today i'm going to talk about it everything changes after the resurrection see last week we celebrated resurrection sunday it was a glorious day Right? People come dressed up. They buy their resurrection outfit, their Easter outfit. They're looking sharp. They're coming in. They may have pastels. Oh, they're just looking spiffy. This house was packed to capacity. You couldn't fit a soul in here anymore. They even had to sit over here, I heard. I heard my sister right, right here. They had to sit right there. I mean, there was nothing left. What you see now, yeah, it was a little bit different last week. It's all good. We celebrate because Jesus is no longer in the grave. He's risen. He's alive. It is something to celebrate. It's something to be excited about. That the greatest miracle, come on, he is no longer in the grave. This, this one that went dead, now he's arrived, is arrived, has risen, is alive. And guess what? He also lives in us. On that special day of the resurrection, everything changed. At that moment, this veil was torn in two. I don't know if you understand what the gravity of what that meant in that moment. Matthew 27, 51 says this, and behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. And the earth shook 
and the rock split. There was a weight and a gravity of the torn, of that uh, veil that was torn. The tearing of the veil symbolizes that there is no longer a need for a Jewish high priest to stand before the Lord and make atonement for your sins and for mine. Did you hear that? Yes. No longer was it necessary for the Jewish high priest to make atonement for our sins. Jesus has provided for our atonement through his death on the cross. Yes. He paid the price. The believer now has access to speak directly to God. You don't longer have to go through a man, through a priest, to speak to your God who created you, who knit you together in your mother's womb, who planned and purposed you. You no longer have to go through a man. You yourself can go directly and have access to this beautiful, amazing God. What once had to be done by a priest is no longer. Amen. We never minimize the resurrection. But I'm here to say that after the resurrection, there's things to be revealed. Jesus Christ's physical resurrection is the foundation of our Christianity. How can we deny it? If there's no resurrection, there's no life. Jesus' resurrection confirmed his identity to be the son of God. It identified his work of atonement. Come on, it identifies the redemption, reconciliation, salvation for all humanity. Yeah. That's what resurrection brings. Because of his resurrection, we as Christians can obtain eternal life. That means we don't have to die and go to hell. Right. That means that we can have eternal life with him if we choose him. Yeah. If, 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 yeah. if we choose him. Yes. The point I want to get across today is that there's things that are revealed us following the resurrection. There are things to be revealed following the resurrection. People come on Easter Sunday and it's this thing and it's great. Yes, I just said it. We cannot minimize it. No resurrection, no life. But what happens after the resurrection? Does it stop there? Oh, absolutely not. We continue to walk with God in power and might. There's a plan. Come on, it doesn't stop there. There's more. The resurrection was the starting point of the beginning of a new life for the believer. Simply put, HOP style, come on. There is more. There is more. Simply put, drop the mic. There is more for you. There's more for me. So the first point, and the only point, hallelujah, is number one <laughs> the power of transformation the resurrection reveals point number one the power of transformation the old man can become new yes. second corinthians 5 17 says therefore if anyone come on therefore if anyone somebody say anyone one two three anyone is in christ he's a new creation the old has passed away. Behold, he is new creation. He has been new. The new has come. Do we understand the weight, the gravity of that scripture? All things, anyone, tribe, language, color, come on, education, not educated, gender, it doesn't matter. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, Again, again, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. You cannot be made new if you're not in him. There's no resurrection in you. There's no resurrection in you. How can you make me be made new? So why do we think that the non-believer is going to be made new? Why do we expect the non-believer to speak a certain way and act a certain way? No, 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 no. It cannot happen. You must be in Christ. Then all things have passed away. All of it, old, everything. God never does things halfway. He doesn't say, you know, I want to pick this, this, and this to be made new, and then you could keep that that old nature. You could keep it like that. That's okay. You could keep that one too, because you like that. Wow. <laughs> really? Where? Show me. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 
the new has come. Welcome the new. Welcome the new church. New way of living. New way of worship. New way of thinking. A new mindset. Welcome the new. For it has arrived. It is here. And it's for the taking. Don't be stuck. Don't be left behind. Because the new is here. And we are going to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. We're going after the new Amen. because he says it belongs to us. Yes. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says this. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Once again, behold, I am doing, I am doing a new thing. Yes. Now it springs forth. Does it stay dormant? Springs forth. Can someone define spring? Spring is not here. Springs. There's a bounce in your step. Something is tired of you bubbling over. It springs forth. Do, do you not perceive it? Can you not see it? Do you not recognize what's happening in house of prayer? Are you lost in the source? Are you so close that you come just, I'm just here, and you don't see what's happening? Do you not see, do you not have eyes to see what is happening in the spirit in this house? Something is happening. Something is happening. He's here. I've been to many churches where his manifest presence is not. He is here. He wants to dwell here. He's going to live here. Why? Because he's welcome. Simply because he's welcome. Not because I'm here. Oh, it has nothing to do with partially with me. I'll tell you why. And partially with you. We welcome him. You go where you're welcome. But he's here. He's here. Because we said come. Come. Because we asked him to come. House of prayer, I pray that you would perceive what is happening in this house. Yes. And he goes on to say, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yes. Ephesians 4, 22, 24 says this, to put off the old self. Yes. Put it off, which belongs to your former manner of life. Former manner of life. And it's corrupt through deceitful desires. Wow. That's you. That's me. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Come on. And to put on the new self. The new self. Created after the likeness of God. Help us, Lord, in true righteousness and holiness. What a scripture. We don't have to live in the form of man. It doesn't belong to us. Wow. If you are in Christ. Paul's telling the Ephesian church, put off house of prayer, I'm telling you. Put off which belongs to your former man. Don't go back to the dog. Don't go back to that vomit like a dog. Yes. Put it off. It has no place in you no more. Yes. It has nothing good for you. Right. But he says to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in righteousness and true Righteousness and holiness. What a beautiful promise. What can we receive? Embrace it. The resurrection revealed that there is transformation power available to us. Yes. There's transformation power available to you. We do not have to live with what was. We can be free from sin, from shame, from guilt. We literally can become new. Yes. Born again. That's what it means. No, can we come out of our mother's womb like, you know, no, Nicodemus, no, no, we can't. But to be born again, we're made new. The old nature must go. He clothes us with truth and righteousness. How we ought, how we thought can, you know, how we thought we can be, we can never be transformed. We can be transformed. Yes. Our mindsets no longer have to live in faulty thinking. No longer have to live a lie. 
You don't ever have to live a lie anymore, pretending you're something that you're not. Oh, he wants to identify you. He wants to show you your identity. Yeah. You thought your identity is in fashion. You thought your identity is in an education. You think your identity is in money. You think your identity is in your status. Are you kidding me? No, your identity is in Christ. In true righteousness and holiness. We no longer have to live a lie. Come on. We can be our true selves. We can know who we are in Christ. We can live a brand new life. We can now have new dreams. We can be healed. Come on. We can be delivered. We can be set free. Because there's power in the resurrection. We can have a brand new start. I needed a brand new start. We can have a fresh start even today. The resurrection revealed the power of transformation. There is nothing that God cannot transform in your life once again if you and I allow him to. Many of us become comfortable with how we have lived. Many of us become comfortable in our sin. It's just second nature to us to smoke that little weed. It's okay. It ain't hurting nobody. You know? Looking at the age room here, I'm about to go somewhere. <laughs> it's, go, go, do it, do it, do it. It's okay to, you know, do what you do when you're by yourself in your room. It's okay to watch, you know, it's just, you think, you think it's just you and the TV. Or you on your phone. You think. You think you and just your body. You think. But if you're in Christ, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And God sees in those all things. This ain't to shame you. It's to set you free. We just get comfortable in our stuff. Come on, I've been there. I don't think God want to set me free of. We think. But it's okay. We actually enjoy it. It's hard to be free from sin that you enjoy. Right. I went somewhere there. I don't know about you, but I enjoy some of my sin. I don't know about you. Am I the only one in this house? Oh, nobody wants to raise their head. It's difficult to want to be free from a sin that you enjoy. That you like. It just feels good. Santa Oh, but there's transforming power in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, when you get a hold of him, there's nothing. Come on. There's nothing that tastes more sweeter. There's nothing that's better. There's nothing that can stand to or speak to him. Because his spring power is the best ultimate that you can have. I'm telling you, as one that has experienced it. Many of us are comfortable living an unbiblical life. It's just easy. Wow. It's easy. You know, we can talk the way we want. We can curse the way we want. We don't have to have self-control with our body. We can do whatever we want. It's easy to live an unbiblical life. But this is how, this is, you know, this is maybe our response. Well, that, that's the way I was raised. You know, Mrs. Stale, that was just the way I was raised. You know, that, that, that's just, you know, that, that, that's what we did in our home. It's not an excuse. Yeah, I'm about to go there. Can you consider that the way you were raised was completely contrary to the word of God? A thought. Consider this. I submit this to you. Can you consider that the way you and I were raised was maybe contrary to the word of God? Maybe some parts of it were in alignment with the word of God. But others were not. Maybe we had a hybrid. God ain't about the hybrids. Let me just tell you. Hello, somebody. God is not into the hybrids. True righteousness and holiness is what the word says. But we, we've had some hybrids in our lives. I ain't talking about the vehicle. I ain't against the hybrid vehicle, okay? Don't email me. Nobody emails me. I'm just saying it. That's what they say, right? When you say, don't email me. Nobody emails me. 
<laughs> no mind on social media, you can't find me. <laughs> Sometimes we have a hybrid church. Maybe it depends on how the mood of the house was, right? Which determined the way you were going to live that day. Wow. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking yes. about? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If your parents did not walk with God, then how can they have taught you the ways of God? Yeah. I always say this because sometimes we're just holding all this stuff. And I know it's real in our life. That's why we have to go to Christian counseling. Because we think that we're going to get rid of the stuff by shaka ba 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 and praying. No, no. Yeah, some of it, some of it, but you need professional yeah. Christian counseling yeah. to dig yeah. in deep. And I know I'm <laughs> preaching maybe, well, I know even very close, close, close friends of me that, of mine that had me in their pulpit, they don't believe in Christian counseling. They will tell you the blood. I believe in the blood. I believe in process. I believe in getting help. <laughs> because after three years, if you're still struggling with the same thing, hello, somebody. Three, four, five, ten years, and we still walking in the same thing. Something gotta change. That's the thing of insanity. Doing the same thing, thinking about change. You need Christian counseling. You need help. You need to get it out. You need to let someone give you some tools according not to their opinion, according to the word of God to set you free. With the shanta and the prayer and the word and the community and the worship. All of it matters. Oh. And all of it is necessary. Oh. Jesus help us. Oh. We were still saying the altars all just, you don't have enough faith. Can you stop that? Watch your turn. You don't have enough faith to believe God for that healing. Are you kidding me? Who are you to say someone doesn't have enough faith? Are you God? Watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Sometimes we just need extra help. I need an extra help. It's okay. It's okay. So depending on the mood, you know, depending on what was taught in your house. If your parents stated that they were Christians and they went to church, but they lived two different lives, then which did they not exemplify God's ways, right? You went to church, they did the church thing, what I was talking about earlier, they paid the tithes, and da 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 But guess what? They went home and they was on the way to church F-bombing each other. And you're in the back seat as a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, an 11-year-old, hearing this mess. And now you confused. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how is it? <laughs> how is it that we're in the house of God, but when we go home, it's like chaos. Some of you have experienced that. If your parents were good people, let me go here too. So let me backtrack a minute. I talked about the Christian counseling because sometimes we keep the stuff against our parents, but I'm here to say, like the last time, it's Liberation Day, get free. Yeah. Like some of them did the best they could. Yeah. Like there's grace, right? Yeah. We want grace? Yeah. We need to extend grace. Yeah. When your parents, if you become parents, you're not going to always do it right. Mm -hmm. Do you want grace for your kids to give to you? Mm -hmm. I think so. So let's give grace. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's have conversations. Yeah. I think this is where the disconnect happens because, like I always say, we like to lift things off the rug and just we don't want to deal with this stuff because it's shameful. It's shameful for a parent to say, I did this, this, and this. Yeah. For some parents, yeah. Yeah. I've allowed this, this, and this. You're looking at your adult child. And you gotta say, you know, I was a prostitute. How do you say that to your child? I slept with multiple men. I was in homosexual. I mean, let's just go there for, for a minute. Yeah. As a parent, let's just put ourselves in a parent. You're telling this child that you love, that you raised. And some people would say, they don't have no business knowing that, I'm not gonna say that, but then your, you, you see your child struggle with pornography and homosexuality, and you know where the root is. But you just want to shut your mouth and pretend it never happened. Ooh, Jesus. But now they're struggling with your junk. Wow. And they're trying to slay their junk and your junk and the grandpa. Like, it's yeah. just nasty. Yeah. So this is why, it's just nasty. It's, a, it's, a, it's crazy. It's crazy. This is why the truth will set you free. Yes. Yes. And though it may look so difficult and be so, I've had to sit in front of grown folks 
and say some very hard things yes. and go through very hard things. But I have rather on. on this mm -hmm. earth yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Confess before man, confess yeah. before man yeah. wow. and deal with it so that I can be healed. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. And so what am I saying? I'm saying that parents, let's go there. Let's ask God for help. Yes. Because we need the Holy Spirit. And let me say this, age appropriate, right? Mm -hmm. Age appropriate. We're not telling a five-year-old I used to do, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Disclaimer, yeah. I think I gotta say it because common sense is not always common. Yeah. Age appropriate. Yeah. Let's go there, but let's have the conversations and stop pretending that things never happen so you see your children healed. And then children, let's release the grace, right? Because you will be in their shoes at one point and you want that grace to be extended. And guess what? We're going to do better. We're going to know better when we know our struggles and what we, we know how to fight together. We're stronger together, not separate. So there's just got to be this mercy and this grace for us all given. And so that's what I'm saying today. Let's deal with the stuff because if we don't, we're going to keep on doing this. And you wonder why you're so frustrated with God, with church, wow. with the, you know, Christians don't, this just doesn't work for me. I, I've been in church 10 years and I'm still struggling from this church and that church and I've been to three churches and this one doesn't, do. stop blaming the pastor, stop blaming people, look in the mirror and let's deal with our junk. Amen. 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 That's the truth. I need to deal yes. with mine, yeah. still as a pastor, yes. I got junk, yes. we all do. Yeah. We're human beings. We're faulty people. Like yeah. until we get our glorified bodies, it's what it is. So I know I went on a little thing, but I think it's important because this is what we don't talk about in the house of God, and this is why we're still bound. Yeah. 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 So we're moving on. The third one is if your parents were good people, good morals, right? Taught right from wrong according to culture. This is still not always God's way. Well, I lived in a great family. My mom taught me great morals. That's great. I'm not taking away from it. But is it was it God's way? Yeah. Yeah. Because good people are not going to heaven. That's right. Yeah. Hello? Good people are not going to heaven. People with good morals are not going to heaven. It's if you're in Christ. So don't get passes to good people. Witness, witness to them. Share with them the gospel. Bring them into the kingdom. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways higher than my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways, then higher than your ways and my thoughts, come on, than yours. Theocracy and democracy is what we talked about the first Sunday. Come on, January 2nd. It's yeah. theocracy versus democracy. Advancing the kingdom of God is our theme. The problem is, is that we live in a democratic world, which is amazing. We don't take away from that. Thank God we get to have rights and not live under dictatorship. Yeah. But guess what? We bring that democracy into the kingdom right. of God and we have it confused. Yeah. It's not your way. You don't get to vote on your life anymore yeah. when you're in Christ. Yeah. You have someone leading you. There is a king and his name is Jesus. Yeah. So you live according to his ways. And it's right here for you. You don't have to figure it out. It's right here. It's the word of God. There's a bunch of it. I don't know my purpose. Start with Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the spirit. There's so much word in here for us to live by. Why am I saying this? Why am I saying these things today? Why am I so passionate? Because the truth will set you free. The truth set me free. And I want to have truth people in my life. Yeah. Lovers of truth in my life. There is a transformation power that has been revealed to us. And we must walk in it as believers. God has called me to declare his truth. Sometimes it makes you feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. The same with me when I'm watching these sermons that are burning inside of me. And I'm weeping. And I'm crying out, God have mercy on me. Forgive me. I need to get saved all over again. Yeah. <laughs> it happens often. Yeah. Come on. I need to help you to understand that there is a better way. Yeah. It's his way. For your family, for your life, and for the generations to come, church. It's his way. It's his way. I no longer want to see you have to walk through unnecessary difficulties because of the choices you are making. 
That is my heart as a pastor. I don't want to see you having to stumble and stumble and have unnecessary drama and stuff in your life if you live biblically. There are promises to living biblically. There are curses to living your way and my way. And to the flesh. Say it again. There are blessings when you live biblically. There are curses when you live according to your ways or the ways of your flesh. Well, why is this always happening to me? Well, what are you feeding? Your spirit or your flesh? I want to see you live life to the fullest. That's your scripture, Linda. Every time I say the scripture, I think of Linda. That's her scripture. She wants to live her life to the fullest, abundant living. That's our portion, church. That's my heart for you. That's my desire for you. That's why I come prepared. That's why I wake up. That's why I pray. That's why I stay in a place of prayer and fasting. There's something inside of me that says the church must rise up and must be a leader by example. You have to see someone doing it. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I get it wrong, but I get back up again. And I've chosen to walk the way of the word, to walk biblically. And there may be a model that I'll be being able to say, follow me as I follow Christ. Somebody's got to do it. Who's with me? Come on, church. Somebody wants to follow you. ambassadors of our Christ. I want to see you soar with Jesus. I want you to see you drag. That's not your portion. I want to see you on fire, excited about him. I want to see you live out your best life on this earth. People think, oh, I just have to live horrible. No. No. We have struggled, but I want to see you live your best life on this earth. I want to see you walk in peace. Yes. Yes. I want to see peace on your face when I see you on Sunday morning, Wednesday when I show up at your house. I want to see you walk with joy, the fullness of joy. I want to see you conquer your fears. I want you to look at the devil and say, you are under my feet. Yes. I want to see fire in your eyes because you're burning for this one, for the one true God. I want to see you live out your best life. I am for you. I need you to know if you didn't know, if you thought otherwise, if you have faulty thinking, those that are watching online that can't be here today, I am for you. I am for you. I am with you. I am standing with you. I am on your side. I may make you feel uncomfortable. I may make you want to twitch in your seat. But I am for you. And you guys can come. There is more following the resurrection of God wants for you to grab hold of it. There is more. And he just wants you to grab hold of it. He doesn't want you to be limited or satisfied with the little. Amen. He desires that you would allow him to demonstrate the transforming power of the resurrection in your life. Amen. Amen. So today, today is the day. We can't get it back. It's going to be written in the history books. Be honest where you are with God. Be honest with yourself. If you want to experience this transforming power, experience this power that Jesus has of God in your life by giving your life to him, that too, if you want to rededicate your life, if you're saying, you know what, I need to give my life, I don't serve God. I know of God, but I'm not walking with God. I'm not walking even biblically. I'm just walking. I'm doing the best I can every day of my life, but I'm just walking. And you want to give your heart to the Lord. If there's anyone in this place, just lift up your hand. I would love to pray for you. If anybody says thank you, if anyone says that they want to rededicate, this is like a fresh start. I'm drawing the line in the sand. I heard you, Pastor, this. It, it dealt with me to the core of my being. I want a, a new start, fresh start. That's you. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Just raise your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. And for those, if there's something in your life that needs the transfer.
transforming power of God to bring you about the change. Just raise your hand. There's something you know. I need the transforming power of God in my life to bring about change. There's this something. Amen. Hallelujah. Just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you. We give you the glory, Jesus. We thank you that you're here with us. We thank you that you love us, that you're for us.
sacrifice and it will keep you in perfect peace. In the name of Jesus. Those that are standing before you that have responded for salvation, we dedicate. Thank you. 
church, there's time to lay hands and there's time for you to go. Amen? The last minute, we're going to thank him for the healing. We're going to thank him that that transforming power that he released on us today, we're walking in freedom. We're walking out of this place.
healed and set free and walk in the fullness of what he has for us. Amen? Yeah. Well, Father, we just want to close out in prayer. We want to say thank you. Tell them thank you. following the resurrection that Father is beginning your church Father it's our time to live 100% in Father we thank you that Lord as we leave this house today we will leave healed whole come on healthy whole and healed in the name of Jesus and it's going to be all for your glory that our lights may shine that we may win some to you Father that we may draw others to our Father in heaven. And we'll glorify God, them in heaven. Glorify you in heaven, Father. We're just so grateful today for what you've done. And God, it doesn't end here. We take it with us. The same joy, the same peace, the same healing. We take it with us, God, to our vehicles, our homes, and everywhere our feet go. That we may be, Father, your ambassadors, the light that shines bright. And others may come to know you because of our lives. So I bless the body of Christ. I bless the people of God in this house. Those that are watching, I bless them, Father God. I bless them coming in, they're going out, Father. I thank you that your face shines upon them, Father God. I thank you that they are blessed, oh God, and not cursed. They are blessed. We speak the blessings of the Lord upon this house. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's clap it up for Jesus. Amen. Amen.